because it's a responsibility to teach from how we learn and what we learn. Everybody free to, to do as they like. So never any pressure and Allah so just said there's no compulsion in religion, in the deen. But for the way and the understanding of the way, the complexity of the way, it's important to write. Because you may find yourself sitting here two years, three years, four years, and you didn't learn anything. Because these things may have been covered years ago, but you don't remember them. Because you're sitting as a spectator. These are not subjects that can be memorized. Where just you sit and you got it. And two weeks later, Ahmed will come and ask you, what did he say? Oh, he said, you got to do like this, boil some tea, have a donut. It comes something completely different. And you may inject and add things you can't imagine. You know how we know? Because uh, people try to do and try to teach other people, even in the association. And when I get the feedback, when we get the feedback of what people tell each other, it's from left to right. Because you, you don't know what they're perceiving of the teachings based on where they are. So then they reiterate something completely different, completely incorrect. So it means that the real understanding of the way, the benefit of the way, is to be a student of the way. As a student, means to write everything. Recording is very difficult because you record, you can't go back to it. There's thousands of recordings and you say, well, what was this recording about? I have no idea, there's no the index that recording. But to write means you open up your book every night and begin to reread all the notes. And one is that you begin to learn that subject. And you, you index your notebooks that these were the subjects in this notebook and I put this notebook away. These were the subjects in this notebook and I put the notebook away. At any time, it's like an encyclopedia. But if I want a specific subject, I can look through all my notebooks on the Sheikh Hisham cover and we can pull out that book and then we have an understanding of the notes according to my style, what I was able to take down of, of, of information and importance for myself. Some people have the ability to write verbatim, which I don't have. So I take, you know, the just of it that's, that's necessary for me so that I could be correct on the subject and understanding it. So one is by taking the notes, then becoming a true student of the way. That you begin to understand the subject and you begin to take that subject serious and you never know when you need that subject. Because a test can come in your life that throws you into a panic. You say, what? What's this? Oh my God, I'm losing my faith. And that subject may have been covered many times in all of our teachings. But you don't remember it. That's the problem. That's the importance of the notes. You go back to your notes and say, oh, well, we talked about this. The importance of death, the importance of life, the importance of realities. These are not the things that we understand. There must be a deeper subject, deeper meaning to everything that happens especially in the lives of saintly people. That's one, is to understand the subject and in case of a difficulty and sort of a calamity or some sort of a test in our life, we can immediately index that subject again and then bring a, a reassurance back into our hearts. Two, the heart doesn't open without the qalam. It's the secret of the opening of the heart and the reality that we're trying to understand is that we want to be from the noble scribes, the Kiram and Kalkabi. That to be from the noble scribes, you have to be scribing something, writing something. That that nobility and the nobility that Allah wants for us is knowledge. To be a custodian of knowledge, but Allah only makes you to be a custodian of knowledge if you're the depository and you have the ability to propagate that knowledge. That is the honor of mankind. 
is to achieve a knowledge, because that knowledge is a power. With every knowledge you have, there must be now a, an escalated power on your soul. If you don't know anything, you have no power. So, for pious people, they can determine the power of that person's soul just by how they talk. Some of the Allah are very hidden, they talk nothing. You feel an energy around them. Others, when they talk, you understand from their level of talk, their power is at a different level. Because as much as Allah is dressing their soul with power, He's dressing them with knowledge. As a result of this knowledge, is also dressing them with power. So we both look the same way. At our beginning level, we are depositories of knowledge. Depositing, 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 because this is the Shaykh's inheritance to the students. He's, he's giving an inheritance and depositing it upon their soul. If they don't take the inheritance and deposit it, it's just lost. It came in one ear, went out, came in one ear, went out. But to deposit it means we're putting it in, putting it in, putting it in, and with all our books and notes, books and notes, books and notes, that as soon as we bring that in, it's being deposited upon the soul, it begins to dress the soul with power. Because yet we haven't reached the station of so much excessive power that you are overflowing with knowledges. They're taking us from ground level to build our soul up with knowledge. As a result of being built by knowledge, built by knowledge, built by knowledge, Allah describes these are full of mashkoon, these are loaded ships, loaded with what? With divinely lines. As a result of that energy and that light, the byproduct is knowledge. Alim al Qadir, Sifat al Alim and Sifat al-Qadr are working together. When Allah wants you to have power, He's going to give you knowledge. When He wants you to have knowledge, most definitely you're going to have power because that knowledge coming out is the result of the excessive amount of power dressing that soul. So then the Shaykh begins to deposit knowledge, deposit knowledge, deposit knowledge. We have to be the Depository. Depository or depository? What's the word? Your depository. Depository. Repository. Where you're, you're depositing yes. these onto your being. So your trust is the book. That is the kitab. We said many times before, you don't want to have only the kitab of your action. Where the angels just write all of, you know, your good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. What you want is the angel to be documenting what you're documenting. Because when you listen, the angel doesn't document anything of the Sobat. Because angel, oh, that's nice, angel, that's interesting. But he's still writing only your actions. You're good, you're bad, you're good, you're bad. As soon as you write what the Sheikh is speaking, that now is going in your book. Because these words that you're writing, your angel is now writing what you're writing because it's an action. It wasn't an action before, you just sit there like this, there's not an action, there's nothing to write. You can't, you can't write and he's listening to you. <laughs> so, okay, he's listening, he heard that. No, you have to provide an action for Allah to give you a reaction. So instead of your action just being, he did bad, he did good, he did bad, he did good. These are from very basic level humanity. But what makes somebody to rise, to be from the khawas, from the elite, of the heavenly souls is they they wrote divinely knowledges, realities about the divinely kingdom, reality about prophets of These have no way of taking a weight. When you write one haqqaiq or one reality from Allah's of just divinely realities, one reality of prophets of and one reality of, of saintly souls, the angels are writing that you just wrote that. Now your book is loaded with a completely different energy. And that's why the ego prevents you from doing that at every possible excuse. Take a can, right? Shake my dyslexic. Shake my fingers don't work. <laughs> but this is the reality. They want it to go onto the book. As soon as you write, it goes on the book. As soon as you write, it goes on the book. 
as soon as you write, it goes on the book. Your book is now transforming. Your book is now having a completely different dress of realities. As a result of your book changing, your entire being will change. Because now what's on the book is going to be responsible for what manifesting upon your soul. Because then Allah is going to ask these angels, these noble angels, that these are haqqaiqs, these are divinely realities. These are from my heavenly tablets that are being written upon this book. Change the sustenance of that servant because now it's not appropriate what we're sending them as sustenance for that level of reality that's on the kitab now. It means the life, everything is real in Allah's presence. The, the life of, of these realities begin to change the sustenance and the nobility of the soul and raises the stature and the status of the soul in Divine Presence. As I said before, it's not only the amal and the actions. Those amal and actions, the prayers, the worshipness, they have to be there. The letter already in the book. What raises the soul to be noble in Divine Presence are the knowledges, these realities. That as those realities are entering into the book, being written into the book, then the status of that soul is transforming. As a result of the status transforming, everything changes. Allah Zawajal begins to look and say, that status, the reality that that soul is carrying around is not a regular reality. Send different protection for him, for her. Send different sustenance for him or for her. Grant them different dresses and different lights and different darajats because now they are the custodians of my divinely realities. And means all of that becomes now the power of dressing on the soul. So the shape with knowledge is dressing with power, dressing with power, dressing with power because those knowledges are not the knowledge of a book where they opened up and said, okay, let's all read chapter 3. And then we start to read chapter 3. That's not what we're talking about. They're talking about a knowledge that's conveyed by soul to soul. It's coming in loaded, loaded with light, loaded with information, loaded with immense blessings. That begins now to transform the soul. That's when we said there's a point in which the shaykh will transform the soul and begin to load it, load it, load it, until the rising point of the soul is so loaded with energy that it reaches a point in which Prophet Sassam begins to send knowledge onto that soul. And as a result of that soul being so loaded with energy, it begins now to send out knowledges. And that's what Mawlana Shaykh said, that Naqshubandiyat al-Aliyah, that we are Rabbaniyun. The ayah of Qur'an that describes Rabbaniyun, be Rabbaniyun, be the people who give knowledge and dispense knowledge. It means all that they seek is divinely knowledge. As a result of seeking it, they're giving it. Because when you're asking from Allah something, you can't be asking for yourself, Ya Rabbi, let me sit amongst them just to make myself powerful. No, we're saying, Ya Rabbi, let me to be of service. I can't serve with what I don't have. So then Allah says, okay, you deposit these realities, deposit these knowledge, deposit these lights, until I find you to be sincere enough that you're going to now go out and disperse those knowledges. But they have to have been deposited. That is the concept of being of service. So it means we take a seat at that reality to be dressed, to be dressed, to be dressed. When Allah sees that all of these characteristics are correct, the akhlaq is good, the character is good, the ahmad is good, the love is sincere, and they have now deposited all of these realities, they are now qualified to go out and represent that reality and dispense that reality and continue that process of light and the distribution of energy. All of that is what we are seeking. All of that is what Allah wants. But what Allah wants is now to see that sign that if something is coming in, there must be a means in which to come out. That we said in the reality of the sama, the whirling. That when you're taking from Allah you can't just take in life from Allah without a means in which to give back everything in our life. When you're asking, Ya Rabbi, give me the rizq and sustenance, Allah wants to see, are you giving? As much as you give, you should receive much more. 
Because for us, it's like planting seeds. As much as you plant, you have more possibility of harvest. If you plant nothing, you're eating your own principle. Pretty soon the barakah of what you've ate will have gone. It means these are the seeds that we sow, these are actions. As much as we throw out these seeds, as much as Allah waters them with good action, as much as we bear fruits to be eating from, means that Allah wants to see that in every action. As we're whirling and asking for line, Allah says, okay, let me see how you're giving back to people. So everything in our amal, everything in our actions, Ya Rabbi, give to us, grant to us, so that I can also be of service and give back to people. So one Rabbi, Ya 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 Rabbi,